Hello everybody, welcome to our midweek Holy Communion. A warm welcome to everyone who have joined us online. Uh, I'm going to play for us a hymn as we wait for more people to make their way to the live streaming service before we begin. Our first hymn is Just As I Am. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. everybody. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. everybody welcome everybody well welcome everyone for our midweek holy communion a moment of silence as we start our service. Let's say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourselves. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters, when we come before God, 
we are mindful that we are sinful in nature. Let us call to mind the areas in which we have failed God, failed ourselves, and failed other people around us. Having done that, let us say the prayer of confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all your creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the time of our Bible reading. Our Bible reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9 from verses 1 to 8. Let's hear the reading of God's word. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the water and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic man, Stand up. Take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew continued to emphasize the theme of authority in chapter 9 of the Gospel of Matthew and the reaction of various groups, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. The paralytic man needed physical healing, but his greater need was spiritual. Palsy was a gradual paralysis. This man was unable to walk or help himself. But fortunately, he had four friends who had love, faith, and hope. They brought him to Jesus and permitted nothing to stand in their way. In fact, in the second chapter of the Gospel of Mark, we are told that the four friends lowered this man from the roof and sent him to where Jesus was sitting, into the house where Jesus was sitting. So he had a very good friends. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven. Then he healed the man. Jesus saw that more than physical health, the man needed spiritual health. 
Both his body and his spirit were paralyzed. He couldn't walk and he did not know Jesus too. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man, lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. I want to talk about two things today, about spiritual health and physical health. Now, to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set your mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Brothers and sisters, in order to have spiritual health, in order to make sure that you are spiritually whole and healthy, you need to come to the doctor Jesus. This man had paralysis, which was physical, but his actual need was spiritual. If you want to be sure that you are spiritually healthy, then you need to come to Jesus. You need to submit your life to Jesus. As this man came to Jesus for healing, and Jesus was able to heal him physically and also forgive his sins, which was spiritual. Come to Jesus who can heal you spiritually and Jesus who can also heal you physically. To set your mind on the flesh is death. To set your mind on the spirit is life. Brothers and sisters, how do you do that? Well, in order to set your mind on the spirit, it means that you engage with God. It means that you submit to God. It means that if you are not a Christian, that you submit your life to God through Jesus Christ, that you bring your life to Jesus, accept Jesus Christ in your life. When you have done that, you continue to go on a journey by studying the scripture and learning from scripture. That is what it means to set your mind on the spirit. Because when you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will help you to make sense of everything that is going on around you. You become more aware of spiritual things. The Holy Spirit, as it were, will become your odometer. And he will begin to direct your path. That is what it means to be spiritual. It means you're reading your Bible. It means you're praying. It means you're going to church. You are, you are, be, you are becoming part of a faith group of the Christian faith. That is what it means to set your mind on the spirit. Set your mind on the spirit and think of the things of God. Meditate on the word of God. Pray without ceasing come to church or go to church frequently. That is what it means to set your mind on the spirit. To set your mind on the flesh means that you are worldly and that everything you are concerned about is worldly. And that is not good. We are told that to set your mind on the flesh is death, but to set your mind on the spirit is life. In order to have spiritual wholeness, in order to make sure that you are spiritually healthy, you need to come to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your life, who is the beginning and the end, who will give you spiritual wholeness, who will make sure that you are spiritually healthy. Just then, some people were carrying a paralytic man. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Then he said to him, Stand up, take your bed, and go home. And the paralytic man stood up and went to his house. What about physical health then? Brothers and sisters, it was never God's intention that people should live in sickness or in infirmity. These things are as a result of the sinful nature of the human race and the activity of the devil or Satan. But this does not also mean 
that whenever a person is sick or suffering, that it is as a result of specific sin in their life. The curse of sin and rebellion affects the entire human race. So when it comes to physical sickness, we need to look at this reading. The people were carrying this paralytic man. Jesus saw them and he said to them, Son, take heart. Your sins are forgiven, first of all, spiritual. Then he said to him, Stand up, take your bed and go home. So if Jesus can proclaim healing over something that is paralyzed, if Jesus can proclaim healing to this man who was carried by four men, in other readings we are told that in Mark chapter 2, that four people actually carried this man and lowered him to Jesus. When Jesus saw him, he said to him, Stand up, take up your bed and go home. So brothers and sisters, if Jesus can bring life to somebody who was paralyzed, if Jesus can bring life to somebody who couldn't walk, if Jesus can bring life to somebody who was carried by four abled strong men, then I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what sickness that you are facing. I want you to bring that sickness to God. Bring that infirmity to God. And my God, who was able to say to this man, stand up and take up your bed and go home. This same Jesus will be able to send his healing powers and you will be healed from your infirmities and you will be healed from your sickness and you will be healed from your disease. Whatever it is that you are going through, any form of pain, any sickness, anything that represents paralysis in your life, I pray as Jesus said to this man, take up your bed and walk home. This man stood up and he walked home. Part of this process is this. You have to have belief and faith in, your, in yourself that you will be able to stand on your feet after many years of paralysis, after many years of things not working for you, after many years of your marriage not working, after many years of sickness in your life, after many years of having that trouble with your son, with your brother, with your sister, after many years of fractured relationship, you have to have the belief and the faith that Jesus will be able to heal you, that Jesus will be able to bring wholeness, that Jesus will be able to bring total completeness into that situation. All you need to do is to believe in your heart. So brothers and sisters, as you go about your business, as you go about work, school, as you go to the hospital, remember that God has promised you healing. And so all you need to do is to acknowledge Jesus into your life. If you're, if you're already a Christian, then pray to God. If you're not a Christian, acknowledge Jesus into your life. And after you've done that, pray to God and ask him that you want him to help you. You want, you want him to heal you and he will bring healing to that sickness. He will bring healing to that situation. He will bring total wholeness to your body in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
We pray that you continue to pour out your blessings upon them. We pray for wisdom and we pray for grace and guardians as they continue to administer medicine to those who are sick. Father, I bring before you all who are sick and are unwell. I pray that as you heal the paralytic man, so you will bring healing to everybody who is sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, I pray for the church militant here on earth. I pray for Archbishop Justin and I pray for the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell. Father, I pray for bishops, priests and deacons. I pray that you will pour your grace on us. I pray that you will inspire us and I pray that you will help us to proclaim your gospel to this nation. Heavenly Father, help your church in this nation and I pray that you send or bring about revival to this nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray for those who are in bereavement. We pray for all those who are bereaving at the moment. We pray for families who are preparing to say goodbye to their loved ones. I pray that those who have died in the faith of Christ may rest in peace and rise in glory. Almighty God, I bring before you the needs of my parishness. I pray that as we prepare to open our church, that you will keep us safe. I pray that you will move every fear from us. I pray that you will send your angels to provide healing, to move away every infirmity from our midst. And that as we open and think about going back to church, that we will be safe and we will be protected by your divine provision. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving to the screen. <laughs> A moment of silence as we start our communion prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turn away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embrace us as your children and welcome us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arm of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shared for all. As we proclaim his death and rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and lift our voices 
to join the eternal song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Holy Communion is ready. I'm going to take Holy Communion on behalf of everybody who is watching me. While I do that, I will play a hymn for everybody to reflect in silence. Brothers and sisters, we come to the end of our midweek uh, Holy Communion. Now, uh, notices. I had a meeting with the church wardens on Monday. At that meeting, it was felt that in the absence of any guardians from the church authorities, we will not be able to put measures in place to ensure the safety of our congregation members in time for the service this coming Sunday, which is the 5th of July. Reluctantly, we all agreed that we should not open the church this week, 5th of July, this Sunday. We are putting plans in place to open the church for midweek communion on Thursday, the 9th of July, and for services on Sunday, the 12th of July. You will be updated on the measures required for your safety as the information becomes available. Now, after that meeting on Monday with the church wardens, this statement was produced. Uh, since that we have received further guidelines on what to do, the government have published a policy on what we can do if we are to go back to church. We are putting together some plans for our safety return 
So the church will open for midweek service on Thursday the 9th of July, which is next week. And on Sunday the 12th of July. The blessing. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I will see you on Sunday online. <laughs>